we may celebrate the mysteries of his dying and rising and be worthy of all this gift of new life. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be joining us today for what we are now referring to as the breaking open of the word. And it was our hope since we're discovering uh, new technologies that we would find a way to share the word from people into this process, which has proven to be quite fruitful. Uh, so most of us have become very familiar over the years with breaking open the word. Sharing our faith. I think um, since people have been hearing uh, Martha, Marcy, and, and Father Tom, uh, it might be nice to just open up today and invite those of us who are joining us by virtue of Zoom. What are your thoughts? Jane? Could you open up for us this morning and digress beautifully? <laughs> I'll try not to digress. Um, thank you, Father. Um, also, just technically, you may not know, but every now and then you two, you slow down. I don't know, Martha, if that can be fixed. It, it says that her bandwidth is, is low. Yeah, that's what I, I saw. We had a thing that said our connection wasn't great. Yeah. So, which know, means there's, there's like, too many people talking. Does it? <laughs> I, 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 th think so. I think it means everybody tried to get on to the same network. Okay, then, yeah, that could be. Um, but. Anyway, um, so the first words, as I recall, of the first reading are you stiff necked people? And I relate so to that. Um, I am so stiff-necked in my attitudes towards certain things. And, and um, I'm trying to, to bend and, and to listen more to the Lord and not have my own idea about who should get healthy and who should get a job and who... Um, I, I have never been persecuted. I'm so blessed. Mm -hmm. And if I were persecuted by other people, not liking me or making fun of me, I don't know it. So I don't have to feel bad, but, um, I love the reading about Stephen. I find it so much, um, more acceptable at this time of year, instead of when we usually read that reading, it's December 26th. And I have never known why the day after Christmas we're reading about St. Stephen's martyrdom. But, um, and I see the tie-in beautifully with the um, responsorial psalm because it is so like Jesus' crucifixion, his crying out, although he's crying out to Jesus and Jesus cried out to his father um, and forgiving. So from that, I really le learned forgiveness. Mm. But Father, you mentioned yesterday in your dialogue that you had trouble with acts. You never really said why, but I, I have difficulty with these Easter readings because we do Acts first and then we do the gospel and it's taken place before the first reading. So we're, you know, and then I went to look in my Bible to see what preceded this particular gospel and it's the feeding of the multitudes followed by walking on water. And this crowd is saying, show us a sign. And I thought, didn't they have enough signs? I mean, stiff-necked. Yeah. Um, but maybe it was a different crowd. <laughs> you know, I, if it's all right, I would like to pick up I'm on done. here. Because uh, about the comment yesterday, it, it's funny. 
what I, what I was saying about the Acts of the Apostles was, and even today when I confronted the crucifixion, I mean, the, the stoning of Stephen, I just, I'm always stuck. The divorce between the Jews and the Christians. And it breaks my heart that this plan unfolded, uh, you know, and of course it, it confronts me as a believer in Jesus but living in an age and a world and a time where you think that there's hope for all people. And so I'm always dwelling. And, and what I appreciated was that you opened up with, which is a beautiful thing in scripture, to take a line and a, a verse, a word, and to find yourself in it. Uh, and that gave me a, a, a new thing this morning. You know, I need to get out of my head and into my heart. Uh, but that's where I struggle sometimes with just these, uh, we're supposed to be joyful that these people uh, were so stiff-necked and then they were stoning and then, you know, the 2000 year history is shameful. Um, but anyway, thank you for that. Yeah, that was some really good sharing. Thank you, Father. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah, you jump in whenever. Cal, give us some insight. Well, when Martha asked me to do this, I have to give you a little backtrack. During Lent, I happened to read three totally incongruous books, but one of them was one called One Ordinary Sunday, which is written by a woman, and it, she reflects on what happens during the Mass. And somewhere in the book, and I think this is the one, she said, God is God, and I am not. And so when Martha asked me to reflect, I thought that perhaps what we were doing was more important than our reflection. That is that each one of us obviously will come up with some different little uh, aspect of what we have read. Uh, if, for instance, if I were Stephen and I went in front of somebody and I spoke like he did, I would expect to be stoned. It, 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 in, in this present day, and we've got it. We've got people doing exactly what Stephen did and tell them you should open up your society. And, and some of us are stoning them in our heads, but uh, nonetheless, they're, they're being rebuked. So um, my reflection, my reflection more is the fact that uh, each one of us now is given an opportunity to become part of the community. Wow. That, per that perhaps if we put all of our reflections together, that then we will understand why we are all together and not, not separate. And, and to that, I, I had, I won't divulge the name, somebody who said, when we were talking about things like this, they said, my Catholic faith is very private. And I said, I understand that, but if, if you don't share it, how does anyone know you are? And in fact, how does anyone see the Christ that's in you? Amen. So, Amen. Yes. Yeah. And it, picking up on, on uh, oh, having a senior moment. Uh, the comment if about I <laughs> now, now, I just wanted to say if it's all right I love your comment that uh, as you reflected on what we were doing it was more about being community and so last week or the week before we just decided as we uh, were able to share the Eucharist just the, the few of us that are in place that we would go from uh, just me speaking to dialogue homily. And we found that it was doing that, you know, the hits were coming in, that people felt included and involved. And, uh, and that was kind of the impetus to it. It is a wonderful thing about feeling together. It, and, and in some sense, we may in ways be more together now than sometimes we are even sitting in the church. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Jared, go ahead. 
God love you, jump in. So <clears throat> I cheated a little because this is the day that um, Martha asked me to write a reflection on the readings uh, for, for the series she has on the website. So uh, I, I gave her that last night. So I did, uh, did, did a little homework uh, as a result. But I, for me, it's, it's interesting because I took kind of a story, storytelling approach to what, I, to what I wrote. And I, I'm just gonna pick up on a couple of those things here. And it's particularly you know, relevant, I think, in this crazy time we're living in right now. Um, I mean, I certainly feel more connected to the community and to you know, my faith, uh, despite the fact that I can't go to church. And it's kind of odd. But, um, you know, even my children, I think, have had that opportunity because we gather in front of the TV, we watch mass. Um, honestly, I, I, I go to, to most of the, you know, the feast days and things like that, but I never have been to every one of the daily masses the week after Easter, but I did it this time because it was much easier for me to do that leveraging this technology. And it's, you know, I, I look at the gospel today talking about, show me the signs. Well, that was kind of the reflection I wrote that I gave to Martha. And it, over the last year, a lot of interesting things have happened. And there's been, I think, a lot of signs. Um, and it was really, God is speaking to me because Martha was, I was supposed to do the reading, uh, the reflection on the readings uh, for Sunday and somebody turned it in and then she said, do you mind doing Tuesday? And this is before I was asked to participate in this. And when I was reading the readings and I started thinking about my reflection, I'm like, oh my gosh, God is speaking to me right now about these signs. And I started reflecting and I, you know, if somebody would have asked me a year ago what I'd be doing during the Easter season right now, I'd probably tell you I'd be on an airplane and I'd be bouncing around between meetings and, <laughs> You know, because that's my life. I, I travel three weeks a month and uh, I have not been able to do that. Um, and I'm enjoying it, honestly. Uh, but, you know, we were at the uh, at, at uh, Notre Dame last year, the day before the cathedral burned. Wow. And so we were there for Palm Sunday, celebrated by the Archbishop of Paris. Uh, my son during that mass uh, was oh. very misbehaved. Uh, and I, I told him, you know, that God was watching him and uh, he still misbehaved and I ignored all the glares I was getting. But the next day, the cathedral was on fire and we could see it from our hotel room. We turned on the news and there it was, Notre Dame is burning. And he fell on his knees and he said, God, forgive me. I didn't mean to misbehave in mass. And I said, well, I, I really don't think the cathedral is burning because you were misbehaving in mass, but this is a good teaching moment. And we, we kind of talked through that uh, a little bit uh, for sure. But it, it was interesting because if we fast forward to this year, I took him to um, Italy for his birthday. And we were there right when all of this blew up and they shut down uh, all, of Northern, uh, all of Northern Italy. And that is, is quite um, crazy. So we went to the Vatican for Ash Wednesday at St. Peter's. And so now fast forward a year, we've, we've gone from being in Notre Dame for Palm Sunday to now at St. Peter's for Ash Wednesday. And as we go through this journey, there's been all these little signs along the way. And it worked out perfectly for us to be in Rome for that week. And he had been sick with the flu a week before. We thought we weren't gonna go, but everything worked. The flights worked, the hotel worked, the schedule worked, school said no problem, be gone. And we went, my wife didn't want us to go um, because the news was blowing up. But when we got there, we went to so many churches and he was able to strengthen that faith. And I think God brought us there, honestly. So when I say, show me the signs, they were there all along. You just have to be looking and paying attention. That is such a powerful story. Thank you. Um, is everybody noticing that that slowing down? Are, we're all being impacted by that slowing down? Uh, only occasionally. Okay, good, okay. that same over we, here. We just blanked out altogether. So, and just uh. heard 
or his voice and you all disappeared and then you all came back and it logged back in. Actually, so, we, we continued. It, it, it said on my screen that Jared was the host now. <laughs> and then it was, right, and, and then it said, but then it went back to Martha being those. So yeah. that must have been when you were blocked out. When we, we didn't back. get blocked out. Well, Jared, I know you got my back. Thank you. <laughs> we'll figure out why your connection's having problems. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, Sheila put our table at a different end of the room, and I think but that's. If I could comment on Jared's uh, comment of. He saw all the signs. Um, there are a whole bunch of readings last week, actually one of the ones that I did a reflection on. Nobody sees Jesus. This, it was like, you know, who is this guy walking with us to a mass? How come you don't know what's going on? Can you imagine anybody saying now, how come you don't know what the coronavirus is going on? I, I, I'm a student of words and I think that the words that were written a long time ago obviously had some different meanings, but I looked up the word obey, and the Latin stem for obeying is to hear or to listen. So if we are to obey Christ, we've got to shut our mouths, sit back, and try to understand what it is that's going on around us at any particular given time. And I suspect that's why the crowd said, what sign can you give us? You know, they weren't listening. They, they were looking for directions. And uh, I try to do that about four o'clock in the morning. I wake up and I'm about, I'm not really awake. My mind's awake, but my body isn't. And I just lie there and I call it my incoming time. And it's amazing. I, I even have to turn over when I finally wake up and tell Connie I, everything that I've thought about, because <laughs> it will it will disappear. And and the reality of that is it came from someplace else. It didn't come from my from my head. Right. You have to open your eyes and you have to open your mind and you open your ears, and that's that's when you see the, the signs. They're not necessarily right in front of you. Some of them are, some of them are very obvious, it, at least in my personal experience. Other ones are not so obvious. It takes a moment like what I had to do and really sit down and reflect and be able to connect all these little dots that, wow, we've done some pretty amazing things in the, this last year that were all part of our faith journey. And here we come to this culmination where now we're stuck at home and we have to connect in ways like this. But Honestly, I don't think I would be connecting with any of you about this right now if we weren't in this situation. So, um, although I hope we do continue and this. Honestly, I can, and I can tell you that the learning curve for these past months for Marcy and myself has been huge. I never even heard of Zoom. <laughs> but now Marcy is practicing every day, learning something new. Maybe she would share some of her beautiful insights with us all today. Um, you're, this is so interesting. And I love every bit of this Zoom. And you have all been so inspiring. Mm. Mine, um, the, the lines that I, that I chose, again, very familiar. Um, in Acts, you stiff-necked people. And in John, give me a sign, show me a sign. Um, my story is, oh, before Ash Wednesday this year, I really prayed in my morning meditations that God would lead me to a very fruitful uh, Lent. And I would come out at the Easter Vigil with just such joy that I could see myself that I had because God did just that. Um, the second, the first week after Ash Wednesday, that first week of Lent, I received a phone call. It was a very disturbing, um, stressful phone call. And I'm sure that um, God had it all planned for me. Um, there was a little thing in my life that I had never really taken care of. I couldn't. I couldn't make the individual understand that they were going in the wrong direction, leading to poor health and inevitably death. 
and I put it on the back burner after I just could not try any longer. And to be honest with you, I really um, let go and forgot about it. Well, this phone call led me back to the hospital to where the person was and uh, brought the relationship together. Um, it was, I believe, a sign from God to help me to help me take care of that thing that was in the back of my soul that was really not making me feel at peace, but I didn't know that. So um, that's the story of being stiff-necked. I just gave up on that person because that person wasn't conforming to the way I thought that person should live. The other thing is, and I'm not very proud of that, but I'm so happy that it's all taken care of. The other thing was signs. You know, I find so often in the course of the day, my meditations in the morning help me to remember to spend some time during the day thinking of God and how he's relating to me in my life and helping me with, with whatever goes on through the day. And you know, he also, helps me stay connected with him in that way. And I see little things, little, little words that he sends me, people he sends me, little incidences throughout the course of the day that he sends me to not only make me improve, but also to make me really feel that I'm walking side by side, hand in hand with him. And, um, so yes, there are signs, I believe. We all have signs each and every day. Thank you. Thank you. Martha, what were you gonna share? Well, <clears throat> I think I think all everyone's pretty much set, talked about the old stiff necked people, which I can be <laughs> I can be very much one of them as well. Uh, and and I, and I also run into them as well. And they frustrate me when they're very stiff necked too. So, but I also have to realize that I can be just as stiff necked as anyone else. Because sometimes I, I like to project that onto other people more than accept it for myself, I think. Um, so I have to remind myself of that when I run into those stiff necked people out there that, you know what, you're probably being as stiff necked as they are back off and just chill a little. And um, because I think it's very easy to, sometimes particularly working working for the church to to see that <laughs> and, and to project that on people and not recognize it as much in yourself um so so i find that yeah that jumped out at me today too and you know the whole idea of you know oh you, you know you're just like all your ancestors huh you you don't you don't want to listen to the holy spirit and you just want to do your own thing and i i guess you know calvin what you said earlier and looking around at the world today um i'm I'm struck by how much, and here I am looking at the stiff neck people again, but I'm struck by how much people are so much about themselves and this is sometimes when it's all about, I want to be on the beach. I wanted to do this. And then you think about all of the all of the other people that are really their lives are in jeopardy with this virus and and there's no there's no difference. And that that's very concerning to me, I think, when I when I look at people and how because I also see the other side where people are doing everything they can to be protective of, of the most vulnerable and, and to help. And, and I, and it just makes me think, wow, you know, I guess we're not all on, always on the same page, are we? And, you know, and even we who don't see ourselves as stiff necked can be about some things too in how we approach others. So, so it's kind of where my thinking is today about, about these scriptures. I just, I just can't help but uh, share uh, the wonderful sense of hope and insight that this is giving to me. Um, I think, you know, uh, I've been involved in the church for 40 years. Uh, 
I've been part of faith sharing groups all my life. Uh, and during this time of uh, self-isolation uh, and being a hopeless uh, extrovert, uh, I realized that it's kind of been um, the lack of connection with people. And I know, as so many say, in the language of spirituality today, it's about connection and making connections and how uh, much we are feeding right now on the bread of life uh, and just being able to draw life from him. It's so powerful. Funny, Jane, you I think, uh, no, go right ahead. You mentioned the word bread because that was the other thing that struck, struck me in the in the gospel, and we all have, we must have 10,000 different interpretations of bread. And what struck me was they want Christ to give them the bread, and they already have it inside of them. That uh, I'm lucky enough to have somewhere back subscribe to give us this day and each day there's a reflection so i get to cheat a little bit and i can use part of those reflections when i but somebody said we all talk about our bread and butter which is the thing which we rely on and which are which is very and it's part of our having a talent so it's more that we have to recognize what the talent is inside of us so that we can share that bread and we really don't we know it comes from god because it's already there but if you don't recognize that it's there you're yelling to somebody hey you know i need food and and you know how come i'm not getting what i'm supposed to be getting and uh, i uh, father talks about uh being a people person i'm a travel person uh, unlike Jared, I was headed for Italy two days before uh, we found out. And within 24 hours, we decided that we weren't going to Italy. And I, I had a very difficult time with that because the place that we go is sort of like my refuge. And I needed to get away. And I needed, and all of a sudden, I found my refuge was cut off from me. And it took the better part of two or three weeks to say, must be another reason. <laughs> <laughs> you stiff neck guy, you. <laughs> Whereas I was called to go there. So it's interesting how that works for, for each each person and, and God working in different ways. It's It's pretty fascinating. Oh, listen, this has been a wonderful uh, conversation and praying to God we can continue it in so many different ways. <clears throat> Jane, since you were the first to open up, I'm going to give you the last word. Give us some reflection. Very dangerous, Father. <laughs> <laughs> well, I perhaps just think I've so enjoyed what everyone has said and, and learned so much from you. And one of the things that struck me, Jared, when you mentioned to sit and reflect. And that is what I know I need most in my life. I've never not believed. I've never not believed. And I know that Jesus is the way. Or other people have other ways to God. Everyone can get to God, but Jesus is my way. And um, this has been such a blessing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all of you for you. being here. And thank you, Father, for including us. Absolutely. I hope to see you all again soon. It's been wonderful. And um, be well. Thank you, Father. Ciao. Ciao. That was incredible. Zooming.